Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to attempt to take the Interactive Brokers Client Portal Web API and take it off of my computer and put it into the cloud. Or as some people say, there is no cloud, it's just someone else's computer. And that's the whole point of this, right? Uh, I don't want to have to run the TWS, the Trader Workstation uh, desktop GUI on my laptop and keep my laptop going at all times. And I don't want to run this Docker container locally that runs this client web portal API. So what I want to do today is see if I can take this Docker container and put it on a server running on Linode, which is uh, one of my favorite uh, virtual private servers. Not a sponsored video or anything, although I will probably leave some type of affiliate link. Um, so I've had uh, client sites running on uh, Linodes for like 10 years now, and so I trust this uh, server company quite a bit. Uh, some people ask why I don't use AWS or DigitalOcean, and you're welcome to use those as well. I just wanted to pick one that I'm pretty familiar with. Uh, the site that I run, Hacking the Markets, that's actually hosted on DigitalOcean, and I probably wanna put it on Linode, actually. I've just had a lot of luck with the uh, stability of Linode, and I'm very familiar with their uh, management interfaces here. So I like using that. And I like that it's like $5 a month, right? Okay. So, uh, how do we get started here? So in the last video, I showed you how to run this client web portal API on your local machine. And now I want to figure out how to get this client web portal API and its Docker container and see if I can run it on a Linode server. And so let, let's see how we do that. So you'll remember, uh, we used iBeam. So iBeam is this project. Oh, and look at that, I'm already the top result there for Interactive Brokers Client Web Portal API with iBeam, which is good. So uh, a lot of people are gonna find that video, which is great. Uh, and so this is the iBeam project here, and we learned how to start it up uh, and pull this Docker image and run this Docker container here uh, on our local machine. And so now what I'm gonna do is go to Linode, and I'm just going to create a new Linode and I'll leave a link. I think there's a referral link if you want to sign up. And let me see. Yeah, there's referrals here. And so I'll put one of these links in here. And if you if you happen to want to try Linode, I'll probably uh, show how to deploy bots using Linode. So this is going to be uh, my preferred hosting solution. And it looks like I get a $20 credit. So I don't get cash. I get like $20 of credit. And so hopefully I can get some free hosting if other people try this out and I'll do some more tutorials on it. So look out for that below. Uh, so I've already signed up and logged into my Linode account here and I'm just going to click create Linode. And this lets me choose a Linux distribution. And so you can choose, you know, CentOS, Debian, Fedora, uh, so these are all different Linux distributions, Ubuntu, Open S -su -su -si? do you say SUSE? Uh, so I'm just gonna use the default here. I actually like Debian Linux, so I'm just gonna use Debian 10 there. And you can select a region, and I'm in California, so I'll just choose Fremont, uh, California there. And we don't need some big fancy server. Technically you can get one with 192 uh, gigs of RAM here, uh, but you don't really need all this. Uh, all you, Since we're just running an API here or a simple web app, uh, just to get started, we can just use this $5 a month version. Um, and you see how it's less than a penny an hour. So if you don't use it for the whole month, so if you just uh, spin this up and then shut it down after you know a few hours, it'll be like one cent or something like, or two cents it looks like. So uh, I'm just gonna do this for this tutorial and then I'll shut it back down. But if I want to run something uh, for a month at a time, it's only $5 a month, which is pretty cheap. So I'm gonna choose the one gigabyte nanode here and a region and there's a label that's fine. I'll leave that as the default and I'm just gonna choose a root password and that'll allow me to SSH in, or you can add an SSH key if you don't wanna to have to type in a password. Um, you can add backups, looks like it's $2 a month. I don't need that right now. So I'm gonna click Create Linode. And just like that, from a web interface, it's going to start provisioning this a web server for me. And on this web server, we can host whatever we want. Uh, I've done a lot of tutorials on Flask web applications, 
fast API, I've done some JavaScripts, like some Node.js stuff. So any type of server you wanna run on here, or maybe you don't want to run a web server, uh, you just wanna run one of these uh, crypto bots or trading bots that I've made in the past. So you could set up your cron jobs on this server, have some code scheduled to execute periodically, or you can have some WebSocket bot running at all times. And so, yeah, I just think this is a good, uh, cheap solution uh, for uh, running some code at all times, not just having something run on your laptop for a few hours for demonstration purposes. So if you want something to run a long time, good to have this dedicated server and it's super cheap. So I have my terminal and I can type the SSH command. And if you expand this out, you can see I have an IP address uh, for my server. And so it's SSH and I have my root account right now. And that's the IP address of my server. And so I can copy that to my clipboard. If I paste that in uh, on OS X, I already have SSH built in. If you have Linux, you, all, you already have an SSH command. If you're on Windows, um, you'll want PuTTY. So you'll want some kind of, uh, this is like a graphical program you can use where you can set uh, a host name so you'll download that and you can type in that IP address and that'll configure your SSH connection for Windows if you've never done that before. Uh, also, they have this uh, web-based console. So I think you can, yeah, you can actually SSH from the web now. So they have this console as well, but I'm just gonna use my SSH client that's built in and say yes there. And I'll just type that password that I just typed in. And look at that, I'm on some server that's out there and it has some default setup. I can see where I'm at. So I'm in the root directory and all is well. So I have a Linode server running already uh, just by clicking a couple buttons there. So that's pretty cool. And uh, what is it? Yeah, so I can type some commands, see that I'm running this version of Debian. Um, yeah, so that's all good. So how do I get uh, this Docker image uh, down, how do, how do I pull this Docker image down and run it on here? So I don't have the Docker command, so I just need to see how to install Docker on Debian 10. And I think it's just one command. Yeah, so we need to uh, install it. So we can run apt get update here to update all our packages. So these are our Debian packages. All right, so I'm done updating those repositories. And so let me see if I can uh, run these commands that it gives me. And that should be good. And then it says add Docker's official key. So I'm going to run this guy. All right. And then it says run, run this. So it's going to uh, update my sources where I get my packages from. That seemed to work. And so let's see if I can run apt get update again. Okay, and then let's see if I can do apt get install Docker, Docker Community Edition, Docker CLI in this container DIO. And that is working as well. So it's downloading Docker. All right, so it looks like that finished. And so now if I type Docker, you see I have a Docker command and it also has this Docker run hello world just to make sure it works. And I couldn't find it, but then it looks like it pulls the image and shows you that it works. So that looks good. It looks like I have the Docker command. So in theory now, I should be able to do this Docker pull voice iBeam to get the iBeam Docker image. And you can see it's pulling it and downloading uh, that Docker image for this interactive brokers uh, Docker image. So that's downloading. And then once that's done, we should be able to run the Docker image and we should be able to spin up this container and pass it these parameters, just like we did in the last video. All right, so it pulled down that Docker image. So if I type Docker images, you should see that I have this voice iBeam image there and I should be able to run it. Now, if you'll remember last time we created this uh, file called env.list. So I'm gonna do vi env.list. And if you're unfamiliar with vi, then use nano, because it'll be easier. So I'll do nano env.list, and that'll create a new file called env.list. 
And in here, I'm going to put my uh, username and password. So my interactive brokers account equals part-time Larry and I being password equals my password. And obviously you'll put your password in here and I'll put mine in here off of the video and then save it. So now that I've saved that file, let me see if I can run this again. So I'm gonna do my Docker run command and give it my uh, environment list file. All right, so when I run that, you see it says go to localhost 5000. I'm not actually on the machine, I'm accessing it from my browser. So I'm going to use this IP address. So I'm gonna go 50.116.2.95. So I'm gonna copy that and you can copy whatever IP address you have. And I'm gonna go like that. Uh, I can't be reached. I need port 5000, so it's running on port 5000. And if I hit that, looks like, uh, so I don't have SSL verification right now, so I'm going to go ahead and proceed uh, anyway. And it says access is denied. So for some reason, it doesn't let me access uh, this server. So how do I get past that? So first of all, I'm gonna stop this Docker container. Um, I'm gonna try, I can't control C out of it. So what I'm gonna do, uh, due to the way I started it up. So I'm gonna SSH back into the box in a different tab. And I can do Docker PS to see the running Docker processes. And if I look here, you see I have the name of sad Northcut, and then yours will be named whatever it generated. So I'm gonna do Docker stop sad Northcut, or you can just use the container ID. And so I'm going to go ahead and stop this Docker container. So there's some configuration setting I need in order to uh, get this to work and let me access it remotely. And so I looked up how to solve this earlier and it looks like there's an, something called an inputs directory here. And it says iBeam will look for a directory called iBeam inputs directory uh, environment variable s slash SRV slash inputs by default. This directory is used by iBeam to provide files required by the gateway and they will override any existing files. So it looks like there's a few files you can provide. One is a conf.yaml and then there's a couple for setting up a certificate. And so this provides this gateway configuration and it looks like you need to actually mount a volume. So you do this dash V and you need to give it a directory where you have these files and then your Docker container will be able to access them as a volume. And so I'll show you how to do that shortly. So if I look at this gateway configuration here, uh, you see it gives me an example gateway configuration. And uh, it looks like, see there's an IP list here where you can allow specific IP addresses to access this remotely. And so I'm trying to access it from my browser. Maybe you'll just write your script directly on the box here and put it on the server, in which case you don't need to do this. But if you want to uh, access this remotely from like another machine or have another server uh, make API requests to interactive brokers, then you'll need to allow that IP address in this whitelist here. And so what I can do here is take this and I'm going to, uh, I'm in my root directory here, okay? And I'm gonna make a directory called inputs and I'm gonna go inside that inputs directory and I'm gonna create a new file called conf.yaml and I'm going to paste the contents of this example YAML file they provided me uh, into this directory here. And under the allow list here, I'm just gonna put my IP address. So I'm gonna check out uh, what is my IP for instance, or you can use IP config and there's my current IP address. And I'm just gonna copy that IP address into this list. So I'm gonna put that in just like that and save that file there. And then now I, that now that I have this input directory and the conf.yaml, I'm going to run my Docker container again and pass it in this input file. And so this is how I do that. All right, so now you can see I'm in my root directory and if I list the files in there, I have this input subdirectory and I have my environment list file. The environment list file has my username password configuration and this inputs directory has my conf.yaml which has this uh, IP address which is my uh, laptop's IP address and I'm allowing that to make uh, requests uh, to interactive brokers and that means I can access this server from the web browser and authenticate against interactive brokers, okay? And so that's good to go. And now I just need this docker uh, run dash V command and I need to give it the path to my inputs file. 
and that would be slash root slash inputs since I'm in uh, my input file, this conf YAML, I saved it to root inputs here. And then I'm going to give it this container uh, path to inputs. And it told me by default that's slash serve slash inputs. So I'm going to uh, map this root inputs directory to serve inputs. So uh, on my machine here, it's root slash inputs. And then on the actual Docker container, uh, those files are going to be available at slash serve slash input. So I'm so I'm mounting a volume whenever I run this Docker container. And then I'm also going to pass my environment option. So I'm going to do my dash dash env list or env file. And that file is called env.list. And then I'm going to do my port, which is port 5000, just like it is in the documentation. And yeah, let's run it like that. Uh, and it needs at least one argument. Oh, I need to give it the name of my Docker image, which is voice slash iBeam. And I'll put this command uh, in the description or in the comments, or maybe even on the GitHub page. Okay, so now you see it runs again. It says log in at that address. And so now I'm gonna go to this IP address, uh, 50.95, just like that. And let's see what happens now. And look at that from my web browser, I'm accessing this interactive brokers login uh, that's running on a Linode server. And now I'm just gonna log in. It's gonna give me two factor authentication and I'm gonna enter that in. And so I'm gonna do this and then click login. I'm not gonna show it on the video. All right, I clicked login and it said client login succeeds. So looks like I was able to authenticate and I have this IP address and this port number. And so if you've logged in successfully, you should eventually get this gateway running and authenticated, which means uh, this headless gateway is running on the server, Interactive Brokers is running, uh, it's authenticated, and it should be able to accept a web request. And so what I'm gonna do now is, uh, just like in the last video, I'm going to see if I can execute one of these uh, client web portal API requests. So client portal web API for Interactive Brokers. If I browse available endpoints, I should be able to take any one of these and run it. Um, I already have Insomnia open from the last time. And so you'll see I have localhost 5000, v1 slash API iServer, and I searched for uh, options for Western Digital, which was symbol WDC. And let's see if I can get this working. So obviously it's not running on localhost. So let me get this IP address uh, that we have running. And so what is it? Uh, 50.116.295, so I'm gonna replace localhost here and execute it. And look at that, we have the Interactive Brokers Client Web Portal API running on a Linode server at port 5000, thanks to the help of the author of iBeam. So thank you very much for providing this Docker image. Now we have opened up more uh, opportunities to run interactive brokers in the cloud or any server we want and uh, we'll be able to make our trading bots or strategies and uh, run them on a server rather than keeping the uh, TWS API uh, desktop uh, client open. We should be able to use this authenticated uh, connection and I have this API response and you see a uh, Western Digital Corporation right there which was the stock I was interested in yesterday. And I hope you bought some, by the way. Uh, you see Western Digital popped 6% uh, today. Perfect dip buying opportunity uh, last week. And you see it's now at 52 week highs. Hey, it looks pretty good. That one looks like it could run. Uh, not investment advice, but I like Western Digital. All right, um, that's it for this video. Hope you learned something. For all you folks that uh, use interactive brokers, should be helpful. For everyone else that uses something else, I got some more material coming. I'm gonna do uh, some videos on Google Cloud Functions after this and hook it up to some other uh, brokers. So thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.